Look at that. What an entrance. Can I wave at them? You definitely can. Hi. Good evening. And they're even waving back. How are you, Lando? Um, I'm wonderful. Very excited. My third, third reveal of a car. Um, yeah, third season in Formula One, so I'm, I'm pumped and very excited. You're practically a veteran of the team. I am, Your feet getting are old. firmly under the table. <laughs> Does that mean you approach 21 any differently? Um, I wouldn't say so. I think there's a little bit more of a leadership role I almost have to take. Um, not like just the leader. Not, I'm not Ooh. leading the whole team, but, you know, there's more things I need to lead upon myself. Um, take on a bit more responsibility within the team, and uh, that just comes with the experience. You know, it wasn't something I could just do last year. It's something that comes with experience and getting to know the team, getting to know the car. And, um, yeah, also having Daniel in the team, a guy with less experience of working with McLaren and the people within then um, that's where I need to step it up a little I bit. Know, I'm fascinated by this dynamic, not just because of the memes, but just yeah. to know and understand how it's going to work because you have been here longer, but he yeah. comes with more experience and obviously more podiums and wins. Exactly. Uh, how do you think it's going to play out? Uh, we have to wait and find oh. out. I don't know. I don't want to set anything. You know, it's, uh, it's an opportunity for us to work together, for me to obviously get to learn from someone different, someone who has scored more podiums and race wins and... Um, you know, my teammate for the last two years, Carlos, was extremely good and he helped me a lot uh, to kind of get settled into Formula One and the rhythm of everything. Um, and he was a very good teammate and we worked well together. And that's something that's very important and helped us score some very good results. So the plan is to try and continue that again this year um, and work with Daniel. But everyone's different, you know, so there's going to be different characteristics. We need to get to know each other still. It's still early days, effectively, here in McLaren. So, um, yeah, time would tell. And how does the team feel different from when you started with them? Oh, it's incredible. It really is incredible. I think, I mean, I obviously joined McLaren before I started driving for them. So probably like two years. So it's been almost five years now with McLaren, which feels like or seems like a long time, but it doesn't feel that long. And um, the atmosphere within the team, the mentality was just not like dead, but it was just lacking a little bit, you know, when it lacked that enthusiasm and that final push and drive um, from the drivers and just that mentality to want to go out and win again. And um, it was a fresh start, obviously, with, with Carlos and myself a couple of years ago. And um, it's another one, to, you know, another one today and, and this season for us to liven things up. And it's improved so much over the past few seasons. Uh, and it's so good to see. Every time I come in, you know, everyone's a bit more smiley and happy. Um, and everyone's very excited and motivated to to take that next step and work that little bit harder, try and perfect everything, um, make the car that little bit quicker every time they can to, uh, to bring the fight to the front and try and get us back to, to winning races and, and on the podium again. There certainly is a real buzz about the place, I have to say. Uh, well, shall we talk to him then? Shall we meet your teammate for 2021? Sure. Here he in. is, Daniel Ricciardo. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Looks amazing. It's great to see everyone. Hey. It's great to see you. Did he leave you enough space to pull the car? I noticed he just made that gap a little bit smaller. <laughs> I feel I... That's probably the best I've parked in years, actually. <laughs> you left the lights on. They turn off, right? Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so here you are. Yeah. In McLaren, finally. It feels like a long time coming. Ultimately, why did you make the decision to move here? Uh, I just thought papaya would look good on me. Oh, I mean, I have to say it suits you. Yeah, thanks. Yeah? Brings out the hues of your skin. The complexity, yeah. the beauty. Um, yeah, it feels like a long time ago. I mean, the decision was made, or like, let's say, kind of executed around May 2020. So, I don't know, that's like maybe nine months ago or something. So, it's been a while, of course, at least in my mind. But now to be here at the MTC wearing the colours, it feels real and... Uh, yeah, I just, I was very impressed with, you know, what the team had done, particularly the last, you know, couple of years and uh, felt like I wanted to be a part of it. And fortunately, the feeling was mutual and made it happen. Talking of mutual feelings, you've got a, a mutual love of red wine with Zach, so that probably helped. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Tell me about the contract <laughs> negotiations, though, because they weren't simple because you were out on your farm in Perth with pretty dodgy internet. Yeah, it was the kind of um, the most, I mean, 2020 was weird in general, but I was, I was out on the farm and yeah, like Wi-Fi was limited, let alone phone signal. And here I am trying to like figure out my future and make a deal in these circumstances. And the kind of 
next person of advice. I mean, I had, I had Blake there and mum and dad at times and, and my trainer Michael, but if I kind of got sick of them, the person I was leaning on for advice was either a, a sheep or a bit of cattle on the <laughs> farm. So it was, uh, it was unique. How was that chat? What do they have to offer? I mean, I, I took silence as... Um, goodness. Affirmative. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was that. But it, it was unique. But I, I, uh, I think it also gave me kind of, this sounds a little bit probably like deep, but it gave me the clarity I needed, like just being out there in the middle of nowhere. And obviously it's, it, every time you do a contract, it's a big decision, but it was actually nice just to be in that environment and kind of make the decision in those circumstances. Yeah, very calming. Um, less calming was your first ever Grand Prix experience. Tell us about that. Adelaide, 93, I want to say. Oh, wow, that's good. Yeah, Some so my research. Well, it, it was pretty calming because the main photo I got from that weekend was me asleep on the pit straight after the, oh. after the race. Just so, exhausted from the yeah. emotion of it all. Yeah, I think, I mean, I was obviously very young to remember, but there's a photo... It might have been 92, actually. Um, and obviously everyone, you know, after the podium goes on the pit straight and there's a photo of, like, me in Dad's lap, like, like that. Aww. And I think I had a... I think I had a, maybe a Jean Lacey hat on, um, if my memory's correct. And, uh, yeah, I was asleep, so with my little earmuffs. So it was a big one. I kind of feel that you're a bit of a closet McLaren fan before, well before you even signed for them. Is that true? Yeah, I, um, yeah, I've, I mean, I've been a, obviously growing up a fan of Formula One and, you know, as a kid, you remember two teams, you know, and obviously being an Italian background, there was Ferrari, which was a team I remembered, and there was McLaren, um, obviously being a big fan of Senna as well. Um, and even actually, you know, Alan Pross getting to work close to him the last couple of years at Renault, that was really cool. Um, but then, yeah, as one of, one of the very first, like, gifts I bought myself once, once I was in F1 and had enough money to buy a pair of jeans, uh, the, the first kind of real gift I got was, was a McLaren road car. Um, and that was still when I was at Red Bull, so I had to keep it a little bit under wraps. Uh, but <laughs> Literally I came, and metaphorically. Yeah, I, I came, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I came here as well to kind of like spec the car out and even going to like the automotive side, everyone was like, you know, you can't really be seen here, so... But uh, I've been a fan of the brand for, for quite a long time. And I feel like there are real parallels with Bruce McLaren's story and yours. You know, leaving home at a young age, coming all the way to Europe to chase your dream. That must sort of give it that extra sense of nostalgia and, and ultimately pride. Yeah, it's, it's cool to, I guess, come from that side of the pond, so to speak, and, and really come to the, the hub of, of motor racing here in, in the UK. Um, where, you know, Formula One is kind of so centred around and uh, to really make it happen, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's like the, the usual kind of story, like a kid with a dream and then there you go. But um, I was, uh, yeah, I still pinch myself. Like, it's, I think I'm entering my 11th season in F1. Wow, you're old. And, yeah, but it still feels, still feels like fresh and exciting. Good. So that doesn't wear off. Now, talking of people from the other side of the world, there's a few that just wanted to send you a special message. Have a look. Hi, Uncle Daniel. I hope you have a good race. I hope you win. And kiss, kiss the Uncle Daniel. And I hope McLaren's will win. I hope McLaren's will be fast. Kiss, kiss. High five, high five. And thumbs up, thumbs up. <laughs> Love heart. Love heart. Oh. <laughs> what a lord. Bye, Uncle Daniel. <laughs> Hi, Daniel. Hope you hope you're well and all is going well with McLaren. Um, Mum and I would like to wish you um, all the very best this year. Great team, McLaren. Lots of history. Stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Wish we were there. Enjoy and hope to come to a race soon. Love heart, love you. <laughs> oh. oh, you guys! That's made me emotional. You guys, how are you feeling? I hate you guys. Oh, oh. I love yous. Um, yeah, this has been the longest, the longest time I haven't seen my family uh, since forever. So, um, yeah, it's. <laughs> I'm not going to cry on stage here, but uh, and that's my little nephew. For anyone that doesn't doesn't know, um, don't have kids of my own. But uh, I, I certainly treat 
little Isaac like he is my own. So uh, I miss, sorry, mum and dad, but I think I miss him maybe even a little bit more. But uh, yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can travel and, and get, get them to a race. We'll get back home soon. But uh, yeah, until then, I guess I just got to drive fast and make all this worthwhile. Um, I think actually that's like when I left home to kind of pursue this dream, that was really the biggest thing that I kept, like that kind of little, in a way, chip on my shoulder. I was like, if I'm making these sacrifices and like missing family and home, I was like, make it work. So that's kind of motivation for me, really. Absolutely. Good stuff. Now, as McLaren have an all new driver lineup for 2021, the team thought the drivers, well, they might benefit from a creative team building exercise. So to help McLaren kick off the season in style, Lando and Daniel were tasked with creating a new McLaren anthem to soundtrack the year, if you will. Here's how they got on. 